in this t-shirt let us know who you think is going to score the first try today we talk about the pride fixture it is massive but there are reasons it is massive and one of the reasons is it's the official launch of quinn's pride so i caught up with the co-chair emily to talk all things quinn's quinn's pride and what this fixture means to her Today is a huge day for Harlequins and Quinn's Pride, and who better to talk to us about that than the co-chair of Quinn's Pride? Emily, I keep saying it's a huge day, but why is it a huge day? Well, it's our third one, yeah. um, but this is the first one where Quinn's Pride as an entity is real. We're here, we have a committee, we have a stand, we're handing out laces and flags. Uh, we're really bringing people into the mix on this. So what it's showing is that it wasn't a one-off. You know, this was not a one-off for Harlequins to just say, for one day, we are with the LGBT community. This is a real tangible sign of, of faith with, with all of the communities that we serve here in uh, South West London. Let's talk about a few of those things then. You mentioned the committee, of which you're the co-chair. Yeah. Who's on the committee with you, uh, and what positions are, are represented on that committee? So my other fabulous co-chair is Nick Hackett-Peacock. Um, so he, uh, he's actually over handing out laces as we speak at the moment. Uh, we've got Abby Barris, who's our honorary secretary, who will be managing all of our membership. So when people sign up today, it's Abby who's going to be getting the membership list together and keeping in contact. And, and the fabulous Jack Duncan, who's our comms lead. It's very visible, and it's brilliant that it's visible, and it's important that it's visible. But, but why did you feel as though this was something that, that had to be done? And how proud are you that Harlequins are the first to do it? Well... I mean, I think there's a common thing for people to think that LGBT acceptance is becoming more widespread and it's becoming easier to be visibly LGBT. And partially that's true, but also there are some really worrying signs of rollback. You'll have seen this week Harlequins released the, 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 the statistics around homophobic abuse in rugby. Uh, and some of those things are quite shocking. 69% of players, grassroots players, hearing homophobic language within the two weeks they were surveyed. Um, and from a fan's perspective, so my playing days are long over, but from a fan's perspective, as a very visible trans woman, um, I transitioned uh, two years ago. I've been a season ticket holder here for 12 years, coming here since I was under the age of 10. And the most terrifying time of my life, really, was walking that walk, which we've all seen the players do and applauded them over the A316 towards the big stoop doing that in reverse for the first time as myself, not knowing how people would react to me as me. Um, just the same person, the same Emily who's sat here for all those years, just the real Emily, the one that's not hiding. Um, that sort of fear was something that we really wanted to overcome and we wanted to be very practical about and say, look, it's okay if you're trans and you want to come and watch rugby. It doesn't matter who you support. It's okay if you want to bring your same-sex partner with you. You know, you don't have to hide that. You don't have to worry about jumping up, giving them a hug when there's a try or you know, giving them a kiss when we win the, the, the championship, which we're absolutely going to do again this year. That's what, we have to, that's what we have to say is this is all just normal. This is all usual, and that's what we're here to do. Um, there's a lot of positivity in what you say there, and you've spoke about coming here for, for over a decade. Even though that was a terrifying experience doing that work, I can just see uh, the walk, should I say. I can see the stadium just behind yeah. you. It's, it's not a long walk at all. but. Here now, as a season ticket holder, does the stoop feel like a safe place where you can come and watch rugby? Absolutely. This is home. I've got the same seat I always had. This is my home. And I think what I would say is, this is you know, I said it before, this is not just uh, let's paint everything with a rainbow once a year. I'm LGBT 365 days a year. This club is there all the time. So when I transitioned and I changed my name and I phoned in to say I need a new season ticket, it was the reaction the club had then when they didn't have to, and you have to do that a lot as a trans person. This club were brilliant. They just went through it, no fuss, no bother, new season ticket, gold one, issued in my name, uh, and I was just made to feel like part of the Quinn's family. And that demonstrates a real commitment to the LGBT community all the time. And what we do just cements that. It just spreads it from the offices of the club and the playing team here into the fan base and just giving them an outlet for that. And working with our friends in Quinza who do all the wonderful things they do, we are a complement to the things they do, and we're really proud to work with them. What about someone like me? Because I'm a straight white man. You are? But I like the word ally, and that's something that I'd like to associate myself with, and, and anything that I can do, and people like me can do, in rugby, outside rugby, on the street, just in general life, to make sure that all of these things you're talking about 
remain the way they are and continue to go from strength to strength and everyone can be made to feel welcome whatever they do and wherever they are not just in England but in the UK and around the world what should I be doing what should I be looking out for and how can I help to make things better I guess there's some really simple things okay so being an ally is not a self-decoration and it's it's not a matter of saying I am an ally and that's it, it it's all about action mm -hmm. So when you hear homophobic language, when you hear people, and I hate the word banter, but when you hear that banter which is homophobic or transphobic, or for that matter, racist or any other way derogatory to people, call it out. Mm -hmm. Be vocal. Don't do it just because one of us is in the room. So if I'm not there and you hear somebody being transphobic, don't be silent or smile on. Challenge it. Why is that funny? Why, why, why are we laughing about that? Why are we abusing people that way? So I think it's about being active. It's about listening to what goes on around you. And it's about having you know, something I, I learned about years ago, which is that moral courage to say, this is not OK. You know, these are my friends. These are my family. Um, there's, there's a very old saying, which is, be careful who you hate. It could be somebody you love. Yeah. And you know, for all of us, I guarantee we all know somebody who is LGBT, even yeah. if you don't realize it because there are so many people who don't feel they're able to come out of the closet. There are so many people who are frightened to do that. Uh, I guarantee, although I am the only possibly visible trans person I see around the stadium, the numbers tell me I won't be the only trans person here. And I want everyone to feel safe just to be here. Just be season ticket holder in E194, enjoying the match, cheering us on, commiserating when things don't go as well as they do. Uh, and really, as I say, just waiting for us to lift the trophy again because we are going to lift the trophy again. You're very positive about that as well, which I, I love to hear. I um, Will Collier was on BBC this week and he spoke about a senior player who he didn't name who did exactly what you said then, who, who spoke out, and that marked a, a cultural change and now it's something that everybody's aware of. How pleasing was that for you, knowing that there are people in this group of players who act that way and make everyone better as a result? It's something which has been the hallmark of Harlequin. So hearing Will Collier talking about that was absolutely amazing, really lifts us. But I would draw us back to a few years ago, which almost was the genesis of us doing the Pride game. And we all know about the remarks that Israel Folau made, very public remarks about gay people. Who was the first one out of the blocks to say that's not acceptable? It was Joe Marler. Joe Marler, yeah. Joe Marler straight out. And that wasn't prompted, that wasn't uh, scripted, that wasn't something which was polished by the club. That was Joe saying, that isn't okay. Now Joe, as far as I know, is a cissexual, straight, white guy. But he said, that's not okay. He stood up for us. Uh, and he stands up for other people. He stands up for the disabled community, for ethnic minorities as well. That shows character, and that shows the character of this club. So you've got Joe, you've got Will, you've got players in the women's team as well. You know, So I spent some time with Vicky Cornborough this week absolutely vocal in their support of our community and as a Quinns fan it just makes me so proud. Proud is the word. Proud certainly is the word. Uh, right, I could talk to you all day but we do have a rugby match to watch. Yeah. Uh, finally then, for, for everybody win. and win, and of course Harlequins women against Sale Sharks tomorrow, it's going to be double win uh, this weekend for the Quinns. Um, but people watching at home, I've no doubt that this will be going out across the social channels as well. What can they look out for with Quinns Pride? If they want to get involved, how can they get involved? So if people are at the match today, we have a little stand in the Robbo Bar. We've, we've declared it a wet one and moved inside. Um, so you can sign up there. We have a QR code. We have a website as well, which is quinspride.com. Um, and you can see us on socials on Twitter at Quinns Pride, and you'll see us uh, sharing news and information about Quinns Pride and what we do. Um, and you'll be able to sign up and be part of what we do and part of the events that we go through uh, over the coming year and the coming season. Um, thank you so much for having a chat to us. I'm so glad you're here enjoying your rugby and I'm so glad that you and the committee are doing all the great stuff that you're doing and will continue to do. Um, come on, you Quins. Yeah, come on, you Quins. Um, great to hear from Emily and really excited to see everything that's going on uh, with Quins Pride as we turn around and see such grim conditions. But we're going to focus on the positives. And another positive is the fact that the King's Cross Steelers came down to train with Harlequins this week. And I'd just like to talk about the environment and the welcoming environment and all of the things that Quinn seem to be at the forefront of when it, seem, when it comes to making rugby a more inclusive game. You were there when the Steelers came down this week, weren't you? Uh, yeah, uh, we were training, they were just came and watched us train and then um, a few boys did a few, few things with them after. But yeah, it was... Uh, yeah. So Christian was involved and, and you were there too. 
they were down and they were given a welcome, but none of them hit any pads or anything. No, 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 nothing like that. I'm potentially after, but I wasn't there for it. Well, they're braver than me if they do. I, I mean, Nick, you're you're relatively new to the club, and whether it is the, the the diversity or the inclusion, it seems to be a place where everyone's given a welcome. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, when I first joined, um, everyone made it very easy, the transition for me. Everyone was very welcoming. As you say, it's a very inclusive environment and I felt at home, you know, from, from the start, really. Um, they're a really good bunch of guys and I really enjoyed, you know, training with them, playing with them. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait for what's to come, really. Lots of exciting things to